Yo dog, Katie Boucher here, Next Level Painting. Got a sweet little video about how to use the sponge. I've been talking about it for weeks and I have been putting it off because it is not as fun as it sounds. It is just easy. I will be using this technique on a base for the night titan. A custom base, David, my brother, no turtles allowed made. It's pretty cool. Gigantic oval, got some barbed wire and et cetera on it. Pretty cool. And I also will be able to use this base to show you a couple other techniques in a you know a, with a close-up like i can do the oxide technique the rust the corrosion so i'm going to sponge on some all some all of these things so you can see you know kill two bears one stone kind of technique i also have a video coming out tomorrow how to paint a warhound titan part one which is part one in a four-part series it is the the framework for all the colors big like blocking and everything uh, it's got a lot of details and a lot of info, so I'm looking forward to that video. Additionally, please don't hesitate to check out my Patreon page and become a patron of the arts. Without any further ado, let me let you guys stop by, check this video out real quick, and I'll hit you guys up on the other side. Alright guys, step one, dry brushing. Obviously, I started with a black primer. Coming in with just a couple of standard grays. This is nothing special. Pick out your favorite gray. It is not, this is the part where you don't really need to know the colors I'm using because black plus white equals gray. Nothing special here. The dry brush technique you guys have seen me utilize before. It's super easy. Big flat brush. Keep that paint dry. Yeah, but sometimes you don't have to keep it that dry. Like I like sometimes to build up a streak and that's what I'm kind of doing here. I'm not. I'm not going with that ultimate dry pigment style dry brushing, but more of a streakier dry brushing. A little bit sloppier on the edges, but when you come back in and you cut in with all the paints, it's really not going to matter. It's going to tighten it up and give you more of a weathered, uh, you know, derelict look versus that really dry antique look. Uh, you just got to go with your heart when you dry brush. It is the simplest technique, but it is the most utilized technique I would have to assume in the world of uh, miniature painting. I mean, I remember the first book that published about this kind of stuff, you know, this was <laughs> this was a, a lost art or something, man. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to come in with some Harvest Brown here in a second. This is one of my favorite colors. Pick it up if you get an opportunity. It's a Reaper uh, Master Series paint, I believe. I just quickly threw a couple of airbrush strokes on. I forgot to film that, but I will show you guys this next stage, which is the Reaper Orange Brown. These are the two best oranges, sorry, the two best browns in the game, Harvest Brown and Orange Brown. Get them, put them in your collection. Almost, and now I'm gonna snag up some gun gray. This is also one of my favorite metals in the game. This is a Vallejo air color, like one of the just easiest to brush ons. I'm gonna, it's a real good mid-tone, kind of medium uh, gray, silver. It's like gray that's metallic. Like that's the best way to describe this paint. Come in slather it on now here's the heat best color you know it's my favorite there's some tyrus corrosion going in so this is the first time i'm going to show you the close-up of the sponge technique and i'm going to do it with tyrus corrosion you saw i just put a bunch of blobs on there built it up and now i'm just kind of sponging the blobs feathering them out getting really aggressive but also you know i know when not to just you know hit it too hard and you can see the close-up here it, I mean, it, it's dry in the process of drying and there's, a, there's texture to it, man. It's like actual textured rust. So to, cro to control it more, to get more details, you just sometimes you got to like put it on with the paintbrush before you sponge it. And that's kind of what I'm doing with the type of corrosion. As you can see, I'm getting the cuts. I'm getting between all those cogs and everything. I mean, this, this is actually really easy, man. Like I said, it's not... It's, it's almost mindless. Like once you've done this a few times, this is one of those techniques that you can just apply this to so many things and you can get it to look good. You can have a beyond tabletop quality look to your models, relatively little investment. That's kind of the bringing hobby back element to this. I want everyone to have good looking models, but I also don't want people to spend two years on, uh, you know, their one army because a part, big part of this hobby is playing with our models. So that's what these tips and these tactics and that's what these uh, techniques are all about. Just, uh, you know, time analysis, bringing more to the tabletop. 
in a, in, a, in, a, in a little bit less time so you can have more time for the playing of, of, our, of our toys. As you can see here, it's coming along pretty well. We're building some rust up, getting that corrosion, that texture in there. And I go back over the same spots a couple more times in some situations because I do like to build that texture up. I think it gives it a super tactile quality, like a realistic rust, especially when you come back in and you know you start applying your metals to it later, as you guys have seen in some of my previous videos of how I dry brush over it. But here's the riser rust, or I like to call it the rizzer rust. I'm going to sponge some of this on in a very similar way, but I'm going to apply the rust directly to the sponge, which these sponges are just pluck and pull foam that I saved up. And you can see how I carved the tip to be kind of sharp. We're just coming in there, dabbing it on. It's very easy. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> just get aggressive, but not too aggressive. If you do get, if you do kind of mess up and you do kind of come on heavy, I mean, just feather it out. Just that's just go with it. Like, don't start over. <laughs> just that's how heavy it is now and don't forget you can always come back in with the Typhus corrosion and fix any mistake you do here so it is literally a all hands on deck jump right into it kind of technique you will you don't have to be you know feather uh, feather feathering anything and you just go I mean look how hard I'm pressing this much into this model I mean it's <laughs> it's so easy and it, you get such a good such a good technique out of it uh I do like to overuse it in some situations because I do like the look of uh, the the wasteland, <laughs> but playing too much Fallout. But as you can see here, it's uh, it's starting to look really sharp. This base, I, I mean, like all those streaks are coming out really nice. And so you can see here now, I'm, I'm sponging uh, a little bit of Tyvus corrosion back in, like I was saying, just to, just to clean up some of that rust that, that came in too hot and too heavy. Now I'm right back to the Rizzo Rust. I mean, I'm putting this thing on, on spots that doesn't look like it should be. Just because it's interesting, man. When you have a lot of colors popping off in different directions, I think it looks cool. Even if it's on some something that you don't normally think it should be on. And I mean, really sharp, really clean, but still really dirty. That's kind of one of my signatures. So everyone's got to find their signature, but all I can do is show you guys how I do my stuff coming around wrapping it up putting this rust on everything this corrosion on everything I mean see I'm even two handing it now double fisting <laughs> I got some typhus corrosion in the left hand I got some rizzo rust on the right hand just going see there you go right there look at that I mean it's 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 just like I said it's a technique that rewards you for being aggressive and just bending that 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 paint to your will don't don't you don't you don't have to you don't even respect the paint man like this <laughs> this paint this paint you own this paint coming into the next stage here really quick uh after i drop a couple more layers of timeless corrosion in some of the corners i think i'll be ready to move on to possibly the oxide effects now i'm gonna take a second to talk about the oxide effects the oxide is a really interesting uh watery paint but I, what I notice about it is that you have to kind of water it down if you don't it will absolutely ruin the paintbrush you're using <laughs> so be careful with that and like I said we're coming right up to the oxide effect right now what I'm doing is I'm just using that gray to wipe out some of the uh, overspray and some of the slop sharpen it back up again as you can see, like now we're, you know, it's very HD, very in focus, a very sharp looking, looking base. Obviously, you want to dry brush the peaks of these little rocks out with a little bit of white. That's how you get it to look truly realistic. Very easy effect. I mean, we're literally just compiling techniques on top of techniques in this video. We're, we have barely used, utilized any actual true skill, just technique, hobby technique. Not everyone is an artist, but everyone wants to play this game and they want to have their models look fresh. And <laughs> you can't, I mean, you can't argue with it. I mean, this, this is looking fresh. And you know, the funny thing about this video is only some parts of it are sped up. Some parts of it are not. This video is pretty close to about half as long as it takes to make this base. And this video is barely over 10 minutes long. I mean, I may have spent 25 minutes working on this base. 
So <laughs> that's that's how compelling the technique, the technique is. So now let's hit that oxide like I promised. Like I said, I'm, I'm just watering it down a little bit, drawing the lines in. Like this is the only thing that takes a little bit of skill. So I'm actually drawing, drawing the, the streaks. I'm not sponging it on. I'm not just slathering it on. You actually do have to control this a little bit. So this is the this is where you want to slow down and not and not coming too hot. This is definitely you do have to respect the oxide. The oxide will the, it will punish you if you don't respect it. It will make your model look terrible. But and, and just wherever you think you should use it, use it in half the places that you think you should because it's really easy to go overboard with this effect. And, but you do, and you do want to get those streaks though, because like whenever you see that oxide in places, it should be streaked. That's kind of the effect it was designed for. The paint kind of like layers on itself really well for that. So don't just draw it or draw a line in places if you, if you have an opportunity to actually streak it out. And you want to use the problem with it is you want to use a pretty decent brush for this, but you don't want to use your best brush because, like I said, it's gonna jack your brush up, man. This is I don't know what they put in it, but whatever they did. It is not good for paintbrushes. And you, you can see in some areas like this tile, it's really easy to use to just paint it right into those tiles, right into those recesses. It's kind of a paint by numbers effect. You, you know, really, really easy as long as you respect it. See, see how watered down it is there? And that's how you get that kind of that layer of like, it's, it's really heavy in one spot, but it immediately starts transitioning into a more translucent version of itself in the next spot. It took me months to figure out how to do that. Because I was just putting it on raw dog, you know, just so heavy. And I do that with a lot of things, like a lot of washes and stuff, and I swear by it, but in this paint, can't tell you enough. Respect it. So I'm coming into the final part of this base, just super quick. Use some basic PVA glue. Layer it on super thick. Just, I mean, just no water. Just put this thing on there. Put it on thick, build it up, and just start dumping these leaves on it. These leaves are such a cool effect. I like putting them on everything. I mean, I have basically find an excuse to utilize these leaves on every project I have now because I think they are new and fresh. I think there's also something about like a really derelict wasteland of like of really crazy colors. And something that you don't expect to see is kind of that beauty of fall. But so I, I feel like that's awesome. And, you know, it's kind of like the old, you know, like a flower growing in a in the middle of a battlefield. You know, like it, 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 the fact that it doesn't belong is why it belongs for me. And so here it is. We got all our leaves on it. Did all of our effects. Utilized some of these techniques we talked about: some dry brushing, some sponging, all of that. Guys, please don't forget to check out some of my other videos.